Good morning. Hey, let's, uh, with all this Harrison Butker controversy, I give a perspective from a, well, I was married 18 years to a wonderful woman. Uh, and we worked well together. We complimented each other. Uh, from the time that I moved from Minnesota, the one requirement Ruth wanted to when we first started dating is she said in order for us to date and get serious that I'd want to ha have kids. And and if I didn't want to have kids, that uh, we were probably never going to be able to get married. Now you look at it at, at a perspective that I was 36 years old. She was 28. She was a nanny. She took care of kids. She loved kids. That was her passion. But she worked, when I dated her, she started, she was working with a wonderful family, three kids that were growing up uh, in, in elementary or middle school at the time. But she took care of those kids and she worked. She made good money. Okay, when I married her, the stipulation was, you know, of course, when I dated, I want, would want to have kids. And that would, it, she would have never married me if I didn't, if I didn't like kids. So we, we, we get married and uh, we tried several times, obviously, in our lives. She could not have kids. She had uh, a physical condition, uh, ovary syndrome, uh, that she couldn't have children. But she still loved kids. She loved kids in church ministries. She loved kids' babies. And children and teenage girls. She served kids. She loved kids. But she still had a career. She still made good money. She didn't have a high education. But she made a lot better money than I made being a direct care specialist. But, <coughs> but she was still a very good nanny. So anyway, years went along. Since we couldn't have kids, we've become fostered to adopt parents. Okay. Her goal was ultimately not just to foster, and foster care is hard because you grow attached to the kids and you don't want to let them go, but she wanted to adopt. So what happens is in 2015, we got little Marshall three days of the hospital. We didn't know we could adopt her. Mom had a chance to get her back. I think... We would have had any counseling if Marcel would have went back home. But my point it is, she's only three days out of the hospital and Ruthie became a mom, ultimately. I mean, once we adopted her. But she became a mom the moment that little girl was in her hands. But yet, she took her to work. She took care of Marcel. She loved Marcel. And my point is, as a husband, I was a homemaker, too. I helped her on the house. I helped take care of Marcel. We had conflicting shifts. She worked, I worked second, third. She worked during the day. So we worked together. We worked together on both ends of it. Um, you know, I'd do the housework during the day while she was at work. And she took care of the kids during uh, the evening or overnight. So, and she did very well of it. But she still had a career, but she still loved her kids. She took care of her kids, but she loved kids so much she was able to do both. And she was very well capable. She was such a strong woman, and I had an ultimate respect for her. But we also, we also worked well together as husband and wife. Derek came along. Okay. So she took care of two children, Marcelle and Derek, plus being a foster mom. We had several kids in our home for short periods of time. She still was a mom and still had a career. She loved children. So she took care of Marshall and Anthony. Our, I, oh, Anthony came later, but Derek for a couple of years. Derek eventually left. Anthony came in. He was under two years old. And again, Ruth took care of both kids, but also we worked together as a team. Uh, she raised, she raised them because she had them a lot of time. I would work second, third. So she, she was being a mom and, 
and not only a mom to our kids, but taking care of Miss Anna, who when she, the second family that we she worked for was, when we started out, she was a year and a half, and while well, she was 12 when Ruth passed away, but she had all these children, but she still made a career. She still was a nanny. She still took care of our family, and she still took care of an, an, two families in that time period. Uh, <clears throat> so you still can have a career and raise children. And she had a strong faith in God. So she took care of kids, not just at work or at home. She took care of other people's children at church. So don't tell me you can't have both. And this whole controversy is craziness. It's 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 an attack on faith. It's attack on family. It's not just about what he said at, at a commencement. It's about feminism, radicalism, not just about working because... In my personal opinion, a woman should be able to do what she wants. In a sense, I women in sports I admire women participate in, in sports. In fact, I I love watching women in sports. I like watching women in hockey. I like watching women in other sports, soccer, actually more than men. I love women in music. I think there's so many talented women musicians out there, and uh, and they're allowed to have the careers. I mean, they should fulfill it. But if it's if their careers are overshadowing and it comes a priority over their children. If you don't want your if you don't want children, that's fine. That's your choice. But you cannot put your career over your kids. You can do both. You really can do both. My wife proved it. She not only took care of my kids, she took care of many children at once. She was a busy woman, but she was able to take care of kids and still be a housewife and a mother and and do really well at it. Of course, we had to work together on this. But but where the drawing line, it comes is also because Harrison and, and a lot of uh, homemakers, they choose to be homemakers. I didn't dictate, never dictated my wife, she had to stay home and take care of these kids. Well, our, we had to work, both of them. Both of us had to work to supplement each other's incomes. But I wouldn't have forced her to, to stay home and work. She loved doing what she di did, but she was. we were able to make it work. What concerns me is not the choice. Women should, if they want to work, they should work but not over their kids, or a priority over their children. And then if you're using abortion and as a, a central factor in, in uh, working, and, and, but see, that's what the extreme feminism is. I get pregnant, I can go and have sex, get pregnant, and I can terminate the pregnancy so it doesn't ruin my career. That's where the line stops. You go in, you want to go and sleep around and have a child, that's your responsibility. Then that, then that's on your hands. That's a living human being. And don't let's don't go there because the Bible's very clear on conception. Whether you like it or not, I don't care if you hate it or not. God knew you before he even formed you. So God is the ultimate creator. So you take it up with him as far as when life begins. But the thing of it is, is once you decide to terminate that child for your career, once you, may, once you got pregnant and once you slept and once you opened your legs, you became a responsible parent or a parent, whether you like it or not. Now, you don't want the child... That's one thing. You put place that child up for adoption because we were adoptive parents. So we want to go on the subject of adoption. We love to have children. We love to have children at home. There's no excuses to terminate that child. Even rape and incest. There's adoptive parents that would love to take care of that child. And the crime of the father, or the child shouldn't punish for the child's the father's crime, what I'm trying to say. But when it comes to choice, once you get pregnant, that's a different story. And that's when you have to take responsibility 
of being a mother one way or the other, like it or not.